the next uh, speaker is Professor Dov Feldberg, uh, a <coughs> specialist in reproductive medicine, uh, who established in uh, 1985 the first IVF unit in Israel at Rabin Medical Center, and uh, until recently added uh, the OBGYN division. He is a member of the board of the World Association of Reproductive Medicine and from 2008 serves as the executive vice president of the association. He is also a board member of the International Society of Gender and Medicine and chairman of uh, the Israeli Society of Psychosomatic Obstetric and Gynecology. He has published about uh, 150 publications, mainly in the field of reproductive medicine, in addition to several chapters in book. Uh, Professor Feldberg uh, will talk about gender issues in coping with infertility. Good noon, everybody. <coughs> it's my honor and pleasure to be here at the bar -Ilan University, and I want uh, this uh, very, very special a symposium or meeting, and I want to thank Orit and uh, Shiri for their kind invitation to participate in this uh, meeting on pathways and barriers in the transition of parenthood. The topic of my lecture is gender issues in coping with infertility. And actually, all of us, of us know that everything starts here in 25th of July, 1978, when Louis Brown was born into this world. And we can see Bob Edwards, the scientific father, the embryologist of this little girl, is holding her in his hands. And Patrick Steptoe, the gynecologist, is looking with wonder on this new creature that changed the world. This is the first publication in Lancet 78 on birth after implantation of human embryo of Edwards and Steptoe. And since then, we did a tremendous progress. We did a progress in clinical and development and, uh, 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 achievements, novel laboratory techniques, improvement in take-home baby rates, reduction in multiple pregnancy rates, and we did a lot of e in ethics, law, psychology, and philosophy of ART. This is a publication of Susan Einicke in Bioethics from America in 87 on in vitro fertilization and the right to reproduce. And she stated that the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights includes the right to found a family for women and men. And Robert Edwards and Patrick Steptoe have already cited the declaration for men and women as a justification of their work. But it took the scientific world about 10 years to understand that in vitro fertilization is not only a technique, behind, because behind every man and every woman, there is actually a character, a personality that f is full with feelings, frustrations, stress, anxiety, and depression. And this is right from New York on physiological distress and infertility in men and women respond differently. 111 couples entered an infertility clinic in New York and fulfilled questionnaires, and the results of the present study suggested that female infertile patients are at a high risk for psychological distress as early as the first day of admission to infertility clinic. Several years later, Facinetti from Italy, an increased vulnerability to stress is associated with the poor outcome of IVF treatment. Very simple work. She took the blood pressure of women going for ovum pickup, the uh, uh, aspiration of follicles, half an hour before the anesthesia, and she took systemic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, and heart rate. And she presented black and white that those women that had a higher blood pressure, systolic and diastolic, and were tachycardic, did much worse in terms of implantation rate and pregnancy rate than the women that had a normal blood pressure and a, no, a normal pulse. So the finding of the present study demonstrated a negative correlation between stress susceptibility and the outcome of IVF ET. England, Bowen, couple years afterwards, psychological reactions during in vitro fertilization, similar response pattern in husbands and wife. And he's analyzing by questionnaire's feelings 
distress and optimism via the whole process of in vitro fertilization, via the process of uh, uh, controlled ovarian hyperstimulation, the aspiration, the embryo transfer, and the terrible 12 days for, for waiting for the blood test for pregnancy, blood, uh, positive or negative. And he showed, actually, that more or less men and women responded in the same way. The same thing was in terms of intimacy and fatigue. The only thing in fatigue was that women were actually more in fatigue during the uh, uh, ovum pickup because she was going under general anesthesia and she, then she has to recover from the anesthesia. But otherwise, the, actually these feelings were quite parallel. So couples responded in a similar way uh, and we proposed that the most important psychological determinant of reactions during IVF is the uncertainty of the treatment procedures. Ladies and gentlemen, as a infertility expert, the uncertainty is killing our patients. They are so in stress, and they are not so, so not sure if they are going to be successful, yes or not. This is one of the main, main problems, psychological problems in uh, uh, these patients. Champignon from Spain, 2006. Should fertilization treatment start with reducing stress? as we discussed with, uh, 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 um, uh, in the morning, can we do something interventionally? Can we do something to help these couples? And actually, he shows in this article that a stressful event, psychological reactors, coping, habitua uh, habituation, and resilience goes into two ways. One, the autonomic system that brings to behavioral activation, and then actually the hormonal system, of the hormonal, of the stress hormones like vasopressin, ACTH, uh, adrenaline, uh, 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 and all other hormones that are stress hormones. So there is a big correlation in terms of relevance as stress markers for IVF outcome in the levels of adrenaline, noradrenaline, and some other stress hormones. And he is proposing an algorithm. The algorithm is actually is based on the psychological diagnosis to establish male and female chronic and acute stress levels with psychological and biological assays, then to treat for three months these couples, and then go only for IVF treatment, a preventive sort of uh, uh, approach. And what are the psychological means? Cognitive behavioral therapy, relaxation training, the uh, uh, differential orientation as to infertility and fertility sabbatical pe uh, per uh, permit. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at the Rabin Medical Center, we're doing about 2,000 cycles a year, public, the biggest public IVF unit in Israel. You should see every morning, starting from 6.30 till 10 o'clock in the morning, 50, 60, 70 women coming from blood tests and for follicular measurements. You can imagine in what stress are these women, first of all, to be successful, to have the results, to hear the noontime what are the results and how do we continue with the medications, and on the other hand, to rush to their work. They are, they are dealing their lives. Uh, 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 they are continuing with their lives. And daily lives, some of them have already children, to take children out of school, out of kindergarten. It's a tremendous stress. So there are countries that actually they permit sabbatical permit. Maybe these women should have some vacation, some rest during the days of induction ovulation and the, the, the uh, IVF treatment. And this is a big question. And you know, it's a, actually, Israel is in sort of socialistic country, and everything is very well controlled and organized. This part is not very well controlled <laughs> and not very well organized. So I think we, as fertility experts, should suppo uh, 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 present our uh, uh, decision makers that should, this should be taken into consideration. So stress reduction is non-invasive, less ex uh, expensive, and ethically acceptable way of improving fertility. Some new works coming from Hungary and Germany. Infertility specific quality of life and gender or attitude in German and Hungarian involuntary childless couples. This is a work that was done in uh, Budapest and in Heidelberg. 288 participants in German cohort and 252 participants in a Hungarian cohort. They fulfilled, uh, these couples fulfilled 16 item questionnaires dealing on gender role attitude. And so they subdivided the general attitude in neuro, uh, neutral 
expressive female, instrumental male, or combined response. And then measured by measurements, by the scale, the quality of life of these couples in terms of emotional, mind-body uh, uh, perception, relational and social. And that uh, uh, actually presented that in the German cohort, the gender role attitude, the best quality of life were couples who had a combined sort of approach. The worst, those who were neutral, they didn't care. In the Hungarian group, it was different. It was uh, the same was in terms of uh, highest quali uh, uh, quality of life group was combined, but the lowest was uh, expressive, the female-like. Maybe it's a question of uh, uh, attitude. Maybe it's a question of education. We don't know why it, these discrepancies, but this is the profile. So the most important finding of the present study is the connection between gender attitude and infertility specific quality of life. The central finding of the study is that flexibility, the gender attitude, combined attitude, might act as a buffer against infertility-related stress for both members of the couple. But in general, they are under tremendous stress. 215 Einhorn. Infertility is still a, a very big problem in terms of global approach. I am the chairman of the uh, uh, REI, Reproductive and Endocrinology Infertility a Committee of FIGO. It's a world organization of uh, uh, obstetrician gynecologists. And we look on the problem of infertility globally. Infertility around the globe, new thinking on gender, reproductive technologies, and global movements in the 21st century. So in the second decade of new millennium, infertility remains as a highly prevalent global condition. This article is posing to five questions. Why infertility is ongoing global? What are the gender effects of infertility? What do we know about globalization of ART? How are new global initiatives and what can be done globally to overcome infertility by low cost IVF? What we are doing with low resource countries and poor countries in terms of IVF, as we know, it's a very expensive technology. So this is the, the map of infertility demography, except North America and Russia. And we can see a tremendous congestion. The, the uh, projector has absolutely changed the colors, but it's not important. This is the congestion, should be in red, of the infertility clinics because of Israel. In Israel, eight and a half population of people who have 28 units, three of them private and the rest of them public. So this is the tremendous congestion of IVF units, IVF clinics per capita, the same, the, the same thing about the numbers per numbers of infertile women. And uh, the, uh, the article is actually showing us that the access to ART appears to be changing gender relations in several positive ways increased knowledge of both male and female, normalization of both male and female infertility problems as a medical condition. It should be acknowledged as a medical condition. Decreased stigma, blame, and social suffering for both, as you uh, were speaking about this, uh, this uh, uh, issue in the morning. Increased marital co uh, commitment as husband and wives. Increased male adoption of ART, especially for male especially for male, we can discuss it later, the males are a big problem in terms of these responses, and improving the marriage and gender relations. Now, low-cost IVF. Low-cost IVF is a global movement that driven by the goal of helping the world's infertility, most of whom are located in resource or poor settings. How we can help these countries? It includes modified ovarian stimulation protocols and single embryo transfer, an effort to make simple, transportable IVF laboratory. We have laboratories all over the world that are traveling in the jungle uh, of Africa, bringing to some centers the possibility to have IVF and uh, doing the, the low-cost IVF with minimal uh, uh, medications in, in terms of induction ovulation and are certainly a step to a right connection. These problems are, uh, uh, we were discussing China. These problems are coming into the, uh, uh, I would say, system of the China in the last years. Gender differences and experiences with adjustment and literature review of a Chinese uh, 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 population, 33 st studies. And they are looking in five domains of biopsychosocial theory. 
existential stressors, physical stressors, emotional stressors, uh, interpersonal stressors, and moderators of stress. And actually, the picture is that there is no comprehensive picture of the experience of infertile women uh, and men from the perspective of gender differences. And in terms of gender differences in experiences with infertility, in terms of stressors, show that the females generally had more negative experience with infertility than infertile men in most of the dimensions. In terms of coping, women employed more self-blame and avoidance and were more likely to seek information and emotional support. And in terms of support, it was found that women reported more perceived support for family than did their male partners in cases of female-male factor infertility. Overall, infertile women had a more negative experience than men, while both men and women were subject to stressful married life. Partner support, sorry. Partner support was also reported to be an important element of coping in, of infertility. We, as a fertility expert, who understand very well what does it mean, partner support in terms of female infertility and female support in these terrible cases and tough cases of male infertility. So it was very important. And I am about to finish, and I want to mention a new phenomenon. It's a not new, but it's spreading over the world. It's the problem of transgenderism. I was asked to uh, write a chapter to a textbook from Columbia University in New York on gender-based medicine. And I wrote a very big chapter on transgenderism and fertility treatment and fertility preservation. You can't imagine, I, 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 I was jumping to this, this liter the global literature, how this phenomena is spread over the world. We have two big centers dealing with transgender uh, people uh, here in Israel, in Ichilov Hospital and in Tel Hashomer. Last year, 133 uh, uh, m uh, people were treated, hormonal treatment and surgical treatment for such a small country. This transgender problem is spreading all over the world. And Timothy Murphy, from California is one of the experts in uh, transgenderism and he wrote this article on the ethics of helping transgender men and women to have children. So what are the ethics? Risk of the pregnant party, medical risk to the fetus and child, psychological risk to the child and family, the significance of risk for, child, uh, for clinical uh, practice, disclosure and significance of transgender parenthood in general. So. A case report, a transgender man legally married to a woman has given birth to two children, raising questions about the ethics of assisted reproductive treatments for people with cross-sex identities. So we must understand that transgender identities do, on, do not undercut the ability to understand the nature and the consequences of pregnancy and having children. And today, because of the uh, liberal attitude in the Western world, the normalization of transgender identities by the law and professional organization contributes, moreover, to the need to reassess negative interpretation to cross sex identities. So we, do, we cannot forget these transgender individuals. We must treat, me, treat them and must help them. And I'm finishing with a very interesting point. Who is treating these patients, men or women, doctors, males, or doctors, females, and what is better for the patients. This is a wonderful work from Hoffler, from Mass, uh, from Mass General, from uh, Howard, on susceptibility and gender of obstetrics and gynecology faculty in department-based leadership roles. And it was actually, the study was conducted by a cross-sectional observation study in US academic departments of OBGYN. And it was accredited council for graduate <coughs> medical education. Look what astonishing results. Obstetric and gynecology administrative leadership by susceptibility and gender. Department chair, department vice chairs, and division directors. We're talking about REI, reproductive and technology and fertility, the majority males. We're looking on the department vice chair, uh, chair males. On the division directors, males. We're looking on the educational leadership, Fellowship directors, residency program directors, fellowship directors, exactly the same. REI, majority uh, men, REI, majority men, and REI, majority men. 
So women remained underrepresented in the departmental leadership roles of chair, vice chair, division directors, and fellowship directors. So there is a discrimination, unfortunately. So if you want to take some take home messages, ART investigation and treatment brought us to a new era of psychological gender oriented difficulties. The number of gender oriented control studies dealing with ART is still limited. The interest in psychological aspects of men and women suffering from infertility is growing in the last decade. Some aspects of anger, anxiety, and depression during infertility treatment were found different and some of them similar in men and women. The vul vulnerability to stress among women is associated with with a poor outcome of IVF treatment. This is very important. And gender-oriented psychological preventive measures and treatment should be offered to couples treated for infertility by health services providers. And finally, low-cost IVF might be a positive solution for globally-oriented infertility problems. Transgender phenomena should be in focus of our society with solutions including gender-based aspects, and it might be a wise step to increase the number of female infertility specialists as compared with male professionals. And before I thank you for your attention, I want to show you my grandchildren, if you don't mind. This is a, a, fa a, family, a family trip to the Alps of uh, Switzerland. This is my granddaughter, Noya. She is now 12 years old. This is Yair. He is 10 years old. And this is the lit little Neta. Here is she is baby, but today she is beautiful child of four years old. And I thank you very much. Thank you.